Father God, we thank you that in you, in our relationship with you, Lord, every day is a new day. We thank you, Lord, that your love never fails, that your compassion is new, your mercy is new every morning. We thank you for your love. Lord, you put the smile on our face. And we walk with you each day is a happy day. We celebrate that this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. As Sharon prayed every day with Jesus is a happy day. Put your faith in him. Give him a big round of applause this morning for Jesus. Fantastic. Good to have you here today. Welcome to the Baldavis Church. Showing people all they can become in Christ. Give him another big round, round of applause this morning. Now's your opportunity to share the love, share the joy, share the happiness right around the building, one side, the other, front to the back, move around, find someone you don't know, don't know too well. Give your best greeting in Jesus' name. Oh yes, a vibe in the house this morning. Please be seated, church. When you came in this morning, you would have been greeted at the door with a lovely smile and a newsletter just like that. And isn't it great to get that lovely greeting at the door? Isn't it? Yeah? Why don't you, why don't you encourage the people at the door and give them a big round of applause this morning. Give them a big hand clap this morning. They come and they bring their very best smile here. You don't know what was going on before they got here, but by the time they get here, they got the smile. So get out your care card, get out your newsletter, and in there's that care card. That's what I want to talk to you about. So if you grab all of that right now, Get it out. That's it. Yeah, come on. And I'd uh, love you to share your pens around this morning because uh, this little care card, you can use that to share prayer points and praise points with us. We love to get those from you. What I really want from you today is all of your change of details. Some of you change your phone numbers and your email addresses and your physical addresses like they're going out of fashion. And I don't know where you are anymore. <laughs> And I'd love to find you. So would you get it? Yes, I lost, I found. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'd love to have your new details. Would you update, would you update us with these? Uh, that would be your email, your mobile phone number. Some of you have a landline. How many got a landline? Some of you still do. Maybe just a few of you. Yeah, yeah, yep. How many of you don't even have a landline? <laughs> My neighbour here, they never gave him one. He's in the IT industry and he can do nothing about it. So isn't that fantastic? Anyway, put all your details down there. You may want to use that care card also to tick the box there for information, sign up for baptism, sign up for a class, whatever we've got there. Would you do that? And while you're beginning to share your pens around, because I want as many as back this morning as I can, all right? Uh, church news will be up on the screen. Check that out while you're multitasking, filling us in, and we'll collect these later on when we take up the offering. Thanks. You're a lively bunch this morning. <laughs> you know, life sometimes seems to be too hard and we just kind of think it's too hard, put it in the difficult basket. What do we do? Well, this week I thought, you know, offering taught, Lord, what would you have me say? What, would you, what do you want me to say to your people? And I picked up John Bevere's book, Driven by Eternity. I just opened it up. And the first verse in amongst the text that, he wrote the first verse that I came across was from Isaiah 119 it says if we are willing and obedient we will we shall eat the good of the land and I was thinking oh yeah sometimes we're obedient but are we willing John Bevere goes on to say obedience deals with our actions willing deals with our attitude if we appear submitted and obedient but have a critical complaining judgmental attitude affecting our motives we will not hear from heaven or eat the good of the land so what he's basically saying is it's possible to be obedient and not willing have you ever asked the question why does God love a cheerful giver he loves a cheerful giver because they're both willing and obedient the giving is the obedience the cheerfulness is the willingness The Lord desires that we prosper and throughout the Word of God you'll find endless scriptures saying that he wishes, that he desires that we prosper and be successful. 
He desires that we prosper as our soul prospers. But, but prosperity only comes if we're willing and obedient. So church, let us stand together. Let us prepare to give willingly, not begrudgingly, not out of compulsion, but freely to our Lord and Saviour of our offerings and of our tithes that we will eat the good of the land. Father, you've heard the words of our song this morning. We've offered them up to you as a prayer, prayer of surrender. Father God, take us each one and use us for your honour, for your glory. We surrender to you and Father, we know the paradox of Christianity is that we surrender to victory. And so this morning we claim that victory in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Please be seated. Three weeks ago now we uh, began the series that we're on this morning and began to cast a vision and uh, by casting the vision, we asked a number of questions. What's the problem? What are we going to do about it? Why us? And why now? Well, the problem is that we are going to run out of room. That's the problem. And we have two buildings. Well, we've got three on our campus. And uh, the other building over there has got the same number of people in as this one. And some of those people now have spilled out of that building and they've spilled into the youth room in this building because not enough room over there for them. And so the problem is we're going to run out of room and so what are we going to do about it? Well, my idea was to spend about $3 million and build another bigger building, but the money is still in your pockets and so we don't have that yet. So we will eventually. And, and so what are we going to do? We're, we're going to do two morning services to accommodate the growth. Uh, the, you know, what's the problem? Running out of room. Number two, what are we going to do about it? Well, we're going to have a second morning service and that's what I'm talking about in these messages. Why us? Well, it's our issue. It's our responsibility. It's our privilege. God has placed us here for such a time as this. Why now? Well, it's because it is such a time as this. The issue is upon us now. I just want to read to you from uh, Esther chapter 4 and verse 14. For if you remain silent at this time, Relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your fa father's family will perish. And who knows but to, that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. If we don't start that other service, and it'd be easier not to, <laughs> God will address the issue by using someone else. And it will not serve us well because we won't have grabbed the opportunity that God has given us. So we're going to grab it because, uh, I don't know if you know it, but we're part of the royal family. Uh, we, are, we, we are sons and daughters of the King of Kings. Uh, you are princes and princesses here this morning. And, and we have come to this royal throne for such a time as this. And so we've begun to unfold uh, this, this series of messages to address this issue and the fact of the matter is on the 28th of July just seven weeks away 28th of July we're going to move to two morning services there will not be a 9.30 a.m. service there will be an 8.30 a.m. and a 10.30 a.m. and sandwiched in between those you'll be able to get a coffee and you'll be able to go to the bookshop after the second service if you want a coffee You'll need to go to the Dome or to Jamaica Blue or to lesser places like Macca's or Hungry Jack's or one of those. <laughs> and by the way, our coffee shop as such will not be open this morning. I have a coffee van. And how many of you here at Friday night coffee shop? Uh, Friday just gone. Some of you, th there were more of you, just not putting your hands up. Did, you had a good coffee, I know you did. Because it was this coffee man that, that he's discovered us. He's discovered us. He rocks up here at 11 o'clock every morning during the week for two coffees, sometimes a hot chocolate. To, and he, well, he came on Friday and blessed us, and he's coming back again this morning. He'll be parked out there somewhere and going, going to help us. But when we go to the 8.30 and 10.30, uh, there will be coffee between those two services, but not after the second one. 
you might want to go home by then. There will still be a 6 p.m. service, and that will have a different message, but those two services, 8.30 and 10.30, same songs, same message, same everything, except if we get to baptise someone, water baptism in one service, we won't do it in twice. That's all right, just get once. All right. So we've been talking about these things. We are building with living stones. And we've been talking about that the last couple of weeks and someone in one of the connect groups said during the week, I'm not sure what those living stones are. Well, you are the living stones. All of you. So in, uh, to, to demonstrate that last week, I got a bunch of people up here, just a little sample of living stones. Hopefully that little sample, what's happened to my pictures, they've gone. I got a picture of that little sample and the pictures have disappeared. But <laughs> nevertheless, they were on here and, uh, and when those pictures come up somewhere during the service, well, I'm going to just show them to you because eventually that's all going to come back. Uh, I, I'm believing. You believing with me? Yeah. I want to see it up there on the screen. Uh, and I, I got some bricks up here, just house bricks, and showed you house bricks. And building with those may be a challenge, but the house bricks are all the same size. They're level. They're flat. Those are the dimensions. And then I got some stones up here. And they're all different sizes and different shapes. And, and so building, if you're going to build a house of stones rather than of bricks, well, then that's going to present some more challenges. And, and, and I think that demonstrates the issue. The living stones, when you look around, and you might dare to do that, just look around and look at these living stones. They're all different shapes and sizes. Uh, and, and different personalities and different temperaments. And different issues and different backgrounds. Different accents, even. Because you've come from all over the place. And to build with you, uh, it presents challenges just for the builder that's building alongside God. It presents challenges and we need mortar to keep these living stones together. You know what the mortar is in the building trade. You know, it's got cement and lime and water and sand and stuff in it. And, and you mix that up in the cement mixer and, 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 and trowel it on and put the bricks together. You know that. What would the... the, the no, I've got a... It's here. I can see it all here, but you can't. You want to come up with me here and watch it here? <laughs> oh, there we go. Can we go back to those pictures? We got, oh, there we are, living stones. Look at those living stones. One of them fell down a hole during the week, and he's a broken living stone now. Uh, then I got the bricks there. And <laughs> they're, 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 they're laughing and smiling in sympathy. You should see the other bloke. <laughs> And we got some stones and we did all that last week. Let's talk about the, the mortar and the ingredients of the mortar uh, that we, you, you know what it is in the building trade, but here with building with living stones, some of the, uh, not an exhaustive list, just a list of a few things. And the most important ingredient is the Holy Spirit. Uh, because if you try to build without the Holy Spirit in your ingredients, you just got a social club. Uh, well, the Holy Spirit ingredient uh, in this mortar mix and, and commitment, uh, your commitment. And one another, you know, loving one another, building one another up, praying for one another, encouraging one another. You know, like about 59 of those in your New Testament. A volunteer spirit. Psalm 110 verse 3, my people shall be volunteers. And a heart for this house, planted in the house of the Lord, you know. You will flourish, you will flourish. Unity in this house. So we continue to build with living stones. Uh, uh, but, uh, but I want to say, you know, building, we're, we're building all the time. We're not going to stop building. But there are seasons in the building process. There are seasons. And there is a time for every specific thing in that building process. Ecclesiastes 3.1. For everything, there is a season and a time. Here we go. Here we go. A new verse coming up. For everything, there is a season and a time. It's coming up soon. For every activity under heaven. Ecclesiastes 3.3, 3, there is a time to what? Build. There's a time to build. Of course, we are always building with living stones, but there are specific seasons for specific building and specific growth periods. And when it comes to the specific building and growth periods, timing is so important. Timing is important. God's on about timing. Uh, and I don't care who you are what your vocation is, what your business is. If you're a business person, you'll need to get the timing right. You can have a good idea. If your timing's wrong, it's not going to fly. Galatians 4.4 in the NLT says, but when the time was right, or when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, 
when the right time was there. NIV, when the time had fully come. God is on about timing. John 7, verses 6 to 8, Jesus' brothers wanted Jesus to go up to Jerusalem, make himself known. If you're ever going to be a man of fame, you get up there with the big crowds, uh, make yourself known. And Jesus said, my time is not here yet for you. Any time will do. John 7, 30, Jesus eventually got to Jerusalem uh, and the crowds tried to grab him uh, and, 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 and do him in. They wanted to seize him and do him in. John 7, 30, as they tried to seize him, Jesus, but no one laid a hand on him because... His hour had not yet come. God is so much on about timing. Now, I began this morning by alerting you to the fact that in seven weeks' time, we will launch the two services. You with me? Seven weeks. Service one at 8.30. Service two at 10.30. Thank you. Acts 2.1, New King James. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all together. Now, why am I telling you that well because the word Pentecost is a Greek word it does not mean chandelier swingers at all you, you might think that uh, it, it means 50th 50th or 50th day and so when the day of Pentecost had fully come it was the 50th day the 50th day after what well I, I, I'm going to tell you it was the 50th day after Passover and the Passover prior to that like seven weeks prior to that are you with me well, seven weeks prior to that was the one where Jesus was arrested and subsequently crucified. You know, 50th day, seven weeks before. And so, you know, seven weeks after they grabbed Jesus, seized him, tried him and crucified him, the day of Pentecost came. And when the day of Pentecost came, the Holy Spirit was poured out. 3,000 believed on that day and were baptized and added to the church. I'm talking about seven weeks' time, a veritable Pentecost. I'm praying that God will pour out his Holy Spirit in such a way that things will be done that you will marvel at. I, I'm praying that God is going to visit us and you're going to see huge numbers come to know him in Jesus' name. And you say, but Gordon, wasn't the whole idea of this so we'd have room in the building? <laughs> you just don't get it, do you? <laughs> <laughs> so we can build more buildings so you can reach more people it's not about the buildings it's about the people we are building with living stones 1 Peter 2 5 you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices to God through Jesus Christ living stones people but wait, wait a minute didn't say holy priesthood not a metaphor by the time you're done this morning, I will metaphor you lot. I really will. You'll have moved on from living stones to holy priesthood to a whole lot of other stuff. God is building his house, and we have the privilege of being fellow builders with him. Oh my goodness, not a metaphor. We are fellow builders. 1 Corinthians 3 9, we are fellow builders with God. We are living stones. We are trades assistants, if you will, with God. He's the master builder. We are building the house of God. Hey, you know what? It, it's the house of God. It's also called the body of Christ. You know that? And in the body of Christ, there are, in, in each human body, there are cells. Uh, there are cells in your body. Your body's made up of cells. And, and, and the body of Christ is no different. There are cells. And we have cell groups. We call them connect groups. We have other ministry groups and other groups that make up this church. And it seems to me to be inconceivable that someone would be in one of the cells but not be part of the church. Or can I put it the other way, not be part of the church but want to be part of the cell. I think that would be a little strange, don't you? I don't think it would bring health to the body. I think it would bring dishealth to the body. It would not bring ease, it would bring disease. I think, don't think it would be a good thing. But the house continues to grow. Proverbs 14.4 where there are no oxen, you've got to love this proverb, don't you? Uh, those of you on the youth team, you know that those who are adults kind of use this just of the youth. It's not. It's not a youth comment. It's an everybody comment. Where there are no oxen, well, you might understand why they might use it of youth. The stall is clean. Yeah. But strength come from the oxen. I was brought up on a dairy farm. And we would bring the cows into the bales twice a day to milk them. 
when they came in first thing in the morning, those bales were as clean as. They you could eat your breakfast off those floors, those concrete floors. By the cow time the hundred head of cattle were done, not only did we have their milk, we had a lot of other deposits they left behind. Because they got excited at milking time and they would leave stuff. And after that was done, we would have to shovel it out. I spent a lot of time shoveling that stuff. <laughs> Sweep it out, hose it out. And then we'd be foolish enough by evening time to bring the cows back in because we'll come the second time and they'd do it all again and we would do it all again, shovel it out, shovel out the stuff and sweep it out and hose it out, you know. Look, I'm telling you, if you put a hundred head of cattle through those bales, you're going to have a mess, you know. And I could think the dairy farmer might say, or the, the son of the dairy farmer, Dad, why are we doing this? Just mess it up twice a day. He said, well, okay, son, we, we won't do cows anymore. No more cows, we'll keep it clean. The dairy farmer would be out of business. He would be broke in a trice, you see. And, and it, 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 there's no doubt about it. Uh, if you don't bring in the cattle, the stalls are clean. Uh, and, and, you know, there's no doubt about it with the church. You don't bring in the people, it stays all clean and tidy. It's as easy to manage as anything with no people. It is so easy. You know, I've heard pastors say, if it wasn't for the people, the church would be a lot of fun, you know. <laughs> that wasn't me who said that, I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> when you've got lots of people, the place gets untidy. You know, few people are relatively easy to manage and care for and keep on track. The more people you have, the more challenges you have, but hey, Listen, the more people, the more life, the more vitality, the more fun, and the more volunteers. <laughs> the strength come from the oxen. Need the oxen. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, whoa, wait a minute. You said we were princes and princesses. <laughs> you said we were living stones. You said we were fellow builders with God. You said we were holy priests. And now you want us to be cows. <laughs> well, that's just one or two of the kind of metaphors we got, and I've got more to go yet. We are also all one of the essential ingredients in the mortar that holds it all together. So I'm not done with metaphors yet. Proverbs 14:28: "In a multitude of people is a king's honor. But the lack of people is the downfall of a prince. And I think what's true of princes and kings is true of churches and pastors, you know, great honour in the multitude of people. Acts 2.47, praising God and having favour with all the people, the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The house is growing. And now I want to change the metaphor again from a house to a ship. Right? Okay, living stones. You're, you're a house. Now I want to go to a ship. Because, see, the title of this message is about launching, seven weeks to launch. And I saw one movie where the house was launched and went into outer space. And meteors were coming at it and stuff. And so you don't want your house in outer space, do you? So we're going to change it to a ship. Because we can launch the ship and Usually you get the royalty down to launch the ship, a bottle of champagne, whack it over the bow of that ship and say, bless this ship and all who sail in her. You know, you've been to the launch, you know. And, and ships figure prominently in the, in the biblical narrative, you know, and boats and arcs and stuff. Now Jesus seemed to be on a boat quite often with Peter and James and John and, and, the, and the disciples. And I think about Noah's ark, a ship, you know, when it was launched, it rescued his family, Noah's family, and saved his family and that whole floating zoo from extinction. Right, David Attenborough, thank you very much. <laughs> the ark was launched and they began a new adventure. Everything would be different. Everything would be different. A new life. A new beginning. But launching into a new adventure can be challenging, right? It can, it just can. And it will mess with people. 
you know, to launch something like that. Uh, it, 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 it's just seven weeks till a veritable Pentecost. You know, we will launch our second Sunday morning service, just seven weeks. And launching into a new adventure can be so challenging. It really can. Joshua is leading uh, the people of God, the people of Israel, you know, from, he took over from Moses and he's leading them into the promised land. And there's no doubt about it, going into the promised land, although they wanted that, you know, it was going to change everything for them. And so they're launching into a new adventure. They're launching into something that they'd never been in before. They had never done this before. And, and I look out on some of you folk and some of you have journeyed with me in other places and you've sort of done this before. But the majority of you, I don't think you've done this before at all. And so Joshua, knowing that most of his people had not, or none of them had, uh, he, he, here's what he said. He says, follow the ark. And this is not the Noah's ark, this is the this little box ark. Follow the ark. It's been carried by the priests. Follow the ark that you may know the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this way before. When you launch into a new adventure like we are, or like Josh, it can be very challenging. Change is a challenge, isn't it? I, I know some folk in this very church that moved house yesterday. That's a challenge, just moving house. I never want to move again. I've moved too many times. And I know the last time I moved was about two and a half years ago. And uh, my last three moves have been in Baldivis, so I haven't moved out of Baldivis. It's not big like that. And, you know, when I moved house, I would leave my office here, and I'd drive home at the end of the day, and I'd go back to the old house. And I'd about pull up the drive and think, oh, 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 I don't live here anymore. Because we always want to go back. And, and some of you, 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 your clock in here will be set for a 9.30 a.m. And if you come at 9.30 a.m., you'll be caught in the middle. You'll be stuck in the middle. It will not be. So change is a challenge. That's just on, I, I could give you a whole lot of examples of that. Uh, that's going to be a challenge. Secondly, when you launch into a new adventure, it can cost. Gordon, are you talking this up or talking it down? Hang on, we're going to land it yet. When you launch into a new adventure, it can be challenging and it certainly can be costing, uh, costly. Luke 14, 28. For which of you, Jesus speaking, for which you intending to build a tower, I intend to build. I'm intending never to stop building with living stones. Which of you intending to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? So there is a cost. Whatever we're going to do to accommodate growth, there's going to be a cost. If we build a $3 million building, cost, right? Uh, whether, whether, we, uh, whether we start another service, there's going to be a cost. And the cost can be in dollars, and it probably will be, but it will certainly be in terms of time and energy and more volunteer input. It's a, it's a cost. I started with Esther 4.14. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish, and who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. If we don't do this, things will go down. God will get the job done somewhere else and we will be the losers. Please know that we will be doing two morning services. It's not a matter of, well, maybe if we can talk Gordon out of this, make him see some sense, he won't do it. We will be doing it. We will be doing it. Uh, what you need to pray about, <laughs> I say what you need to pray about, what I'd like you to pray about uh, is, is what you're going to do. What you're going to do about the two services. You know, which one are you going to come to? Some of you think, well, I'm coming to both. Some of you have thought that already. Praise God. Hey, you are honor to you. All honor and glory to you. You say, I'm coming to two. Some of you say, I'm not sure which one. I'm thinking that in winter I'm coming to the late one. In summer I'm coming to the early one. Some of you are thinking that already. Well, I just want you to pray about it. Which one I'm going to come to? Which one I'm going to volunteer in? How much volunteering I'm going to do? Sunday the 28th of July, just seven weeks out, 8.30 a.m., 10.30 a.m., bookshop and coffee uh, will be the go between those two services. And oh, a flyer in your newsletter, uh, that's what you got your newsletter for, not to leave behind on the floor here, but to take home and stick these things on your fridge with a fridge magnet. Wouldn't that be cool? I'm going to read you this one because it's so well written and it's all about this sort of stuff. Ministry opportunities for you. <laughs> Psalm 110, verse 3, my people shall be, what? 
volunteers. Ministry opportunities for you. Do you have a warm and welcoming disposition? Enjoy talking to people and putting them at ease? Why not serve as a greeter or an usher uh, during any one of our services? Or do you feel safer with a counter or desk between you and the unknown person? <laughs> then maybe the coffee shop or bookshop would better suit you. Are you an attention to detail kind of person like to be unseen in your service to Christ? Maybe service logistics or in-service steward is the position for you. Are you a quick thinker? and able to direct with accuracy and authority. Some of you wanted the authority, here it is, coming up. Accuracy and authority. Car parking, marshal or ushers may be your thing. Do you enjoy technology? Uh, this morning they're not. Uh, <laughs> sound and visual equipment. Why not try, to try your hand at being part of the production team? When I read your there, I thought it said pour, and I think they're going to pour themselves into this. You will. None of these sound like me, we hear you say. Well, wait, there's more. Are you passionate about children? Huh, got, got your attention. Are you passionate about children of all shapes and sizes? Does your heart beat for the education and discipleship of our young ones? Our kids, our church ministry is another whole world of opportunities for you. Baby room, six weeks to 18 months, nursery. That's where my wife is this morning. She's in nursery. Nursery, 18 months to kindy. Kids church, pre-primary to year seven. Jesus said, do not prevent the children from coming to me. But wait, there's more. That doesn't even happen on Sundays. Well, folks, some opportunities there, you think? Yeah, I think there are. So launching into a new adventure can be a challenge. Launching into this new adventure can be a cost. And thirdly, launching into this new adventure can be rewarding. There is so much personal fulfillment in being part of a project that is hitched to the prime mover of the cause of Christ. And together we can do so much more as a team. We really can. Someone gave me this at their school newsletter during the week. A little quote from Andrew Carnegie. Teamwork is the ability... This is Rocky Beach. How many, how many got kids going to Rocky Beach school? Yeah, a few of you. I don't want to admit it, but a few of you have. Well, this came from that. That came right out of that. Nice, yeah. Rocky Beach Primary School Bulletin. Some of my kids went there donkeys years ago. And they're okay today, so it's good. <laughs> Teamwork is the ability to work together toward a common vision. It is the fuel that allows common people to attain uncommon results. That's what we're talking about. So the church in Acts 2 saw 3,000 people baptized and added to the church on day one, seven weeks after the Passover. And today marks seven weeks to the launch. The church in Acts 2 saw those same people uh, devoted to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, uh, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And the church saw the miracles of God flow. They saw people healed. They saw people get their lives together. And they, they met uh, publicly in a large group like this and they met weekly in smaller groups house to house I would call those connect groups Acts 2 47 getting ready now guys praising God and having the favor with all the people the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved we've been singing a song didn't do it this morning and, and, and it says God is awesome in this place I found where I belong I'm a living stone in this house I will grow. There is power here for miracles to set the captives free to make the broken whole. God is awesome in this place. Let's get ready to see the miracle. Let's get ready to be part of the miracle in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, I want to thank you that you are privileging us with this opportunity. Father, yeah, we know there's going to be a challenge. We know there's going to be a cost. We know there's going to be a, a benefit too. There's going to be a reward in doing what you call us to do. And so, Father, we stand before you this morning and we're looking forward to a veritable Pentecost uh, being poured out here in seven weeks' time. Thank you, our Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Let's stand, church. You know, we worship and follow and serve the God whose love never ends. He loves us so much, and that's the reason we do what we do, so that the love that he... If, if you're a cup, if, and if you're a bucket, and he's filled you full to overflowing... 
with the love, we want it to overflow into others. That's the whole point. Others to know Jesus and know the power of his love. We've got that song to sing in a moment, and as we sing that, you know, I'm going to ask you to do some business with God this morning. Right where you stand, right where you sit, you can do that. You can say, God, I'm talking to you. I want to be part of your plan, part of your team. You can do it where you are. I just want you to be able to make it more powerful in your life, more definitive. And so I'm going to ask you right now, Spirit of God speaking to you and touching your heart, and I'm praying that he is. I'm praying like crazy right now that the Spirit of God will be hovering here and touching your heart. And as he does that, and as he puts a, puts a call on your life and on your heart, don't just stay where you are. I'm going to invite you to come and stand down the front this morning. You say, you know, I'm stepping out for God. I want to go the next step of the journey with God. I want to surrender my life to Jesus in a way that I never have. Come and stand down the front this morning. Would you do that? God speaking to you. You, you, you. This can be your definitive day. You know, you say, well, it all changed for me on that day. Seven weeks out from two services. It all changed. I, I, I gave my life to Christ in a way that I never had before. You might say, well, you know, I've done that. I've done that. I just want, I want more of what he's got for me. Make it more of what he's got for you today. Would you do that? Don't, don't sit on the sidelines. Get right into the middle of what he's doing through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's sing together and let's step out. Father, we want to thank you so much for your never-ending love. Love us so much. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. In this is love, not that we love God but he loved us. Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Thank you so much, Father. Lord, I pray for every individual in this house this morning. Right now they would know a touch of your love. They would know your hand upon them, your smile on them. Help them to step into the light of your love, each one, Father God. And Father, as we make our plans to move forward to do what we believe you're calling us to do, we're looking to you, our loving God, that you might meet us in every need that we have because of the changes that are on our horizon. Thank you, our Father God. Thank you. We look to you, the great provider. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Grace is sufficient for me. Father, thank you for your provision. Thank you for your love. Pour out your grace on every individual in the house this morning. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Folks, just before you move, just a few things I need to say. This corner right over here, we call prayer corner. And uh, if you're needing prayer for anything this morning, head over to that corner, would you? Uh, I have folk standing in that corner who will be just waiting to pray with you and for you and to give you a word of encouragement. So uh, make the most of that opportunity this morning. Check out your bookshop this morning. Uh, new books in there. Check it out. Uh, uh, the coffee shop's not open. I've got a coffee van which may or may not have arrived yet, but he'll be out here and he'll serve your needs quite well. But uh, yes, I've got the nod of approval. A coffee man is here. Hey, how many want looking for coffee this morning? He does great. Yeah, that's good, good on you. Yeah. Uh, but this now becomes a place of ministry in here. So if you want to continue the conversation we just started, start a conversation. That would be in the foyer of the bookshop, out near the coffee van, out in the, in the coffee shop, at the rear of the coffee shop where there's seating there for you. Met someone new this morning. Go and buy him a coffee, would you? And a muffin and uh, bless them this morning in Jesus name love to see you back here tonight 6 o'clock service always a fantastic service as we look in our series the God of the Second Chance have a fantastic day